The greenhouse gas protocol standard classifies a company's greenhouse gas, or GHG, emissions into three scopes. Scope one emissions are the direct emissions from a company's owned or controlled activities. Scope two emissions are indirectly generated from purchased energy consumed by a company. Both are pretty well known. However, scope three goes a step further. It addresses indirect emissions, both upstream and downstream, of a company's own activities. They include the emissions produced by suppliers, as well as those generated by customers when using the company's products or services. So for example, upstream emissions might include those generated in producing the raw materials, take metals and rubber, that are required to manufacture a car. Downstream emissions would then be those generated after the car is produced, such as waste management or the emissions generated by the car itself when driven. Well, scope three emissions account for over 70% of the average company's total emissions. So we believe that tackling scope three emissions is necessary for all stakeholders to move the economy further towards net zero by 2050, thus limiting global warming to a 1.5 degrees Celsius scenario. And furthermore, we believe that addressing scope three emissions will help individual companies to better mitigate the risks and seize the opportunities of the climate transition. Let's go back to the example of a car manufacturer. The emissions generated by the cars that the company sells are its largest scope of scope three emissions and by considering the market opportunity to produce lower emission vehicles, the manufacturer may appeal to increasingly eco-conscious drivers while meeting more stringent regulatory requirements. The answer is yes. It is indeed complex to measure the flow of emissions through the whole value chain. And the most significant emissions are the purchased goods and services and the use of products sold. Together, these represent over 70% of all reported scope three emissions. And both categories are highly difficult to measure and manage as well as challenging to decarbonize. However, we believe there are solutions to these obstacles. Help is at hand through various initiatives, for instance, to help companies collaborate with suppliers in a structured way, or to know where and how to start managing emissions in industrial sectors. And with these newer approaches and solutions now available, we do believe that investors and corporates should view measurement and management of scope three emissions as an opportunity rather than a problem. The evolving standards and regulations can be met with a pragmatic approach of identifying and prioritizing emissions categories in order to articulate a specific decarbonization pathway. Over time, we believe this could allow for a genuinely connected alignment of emissions reductions targets from the top of the value chain to the bottom, which is critical to achieving net zero goals. So in conclusion, scope one and two, great work is happening already. Scope three, here we come. And as for scope four, it'll have to be discussed at a later date.